I'm here with Tyler, Explorer <laughs> Scientific. And I wanted to kind of show something not too many people get to see. And this is a three inch eyepiece. What a monster. This is a monster. I mean, have you felt the weight of this thing? Yeah, that's, that's beefy. I like a cup of coffee. No, it's not, that's more than a cup of coffee. That's like a cantina coffee it's like there. A cantina coffee. It's like those old Stanleys is what this thing is. Great for observatories or Dobbs. Mm -hmm. You know, with our new focuser that we came out with about last year, that FOC3, you can put in a three inch diagonal and you can get to viewing at 100 degrees at 30 mil. Ooh, you can see a lot of stuff. I know, because like, an eyepiece like this, this is for big, big scopes. And with like, as your scopes get bigger and bigger, you kind of have to get longer in focal length as you go up in apertures. Like let's say you're using a 24 inch daub. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you just have to have a long focal length. And a lot of the popular uh, targets, just you won't be able to see anything unless you have a monster eyepiece like this. And that, that's what something like this is for. A hundred percent, that's what exactly what this is for. It's, it's more of a, a specialty item. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot of people that have 24 inch daubs or bigger because they're, they're a niche collection. You're in a top top tier echelon of individuals that can do it. Now you can put it on this 152. It's only 1215 millimeters of focal length. So you can use it on some refractors depending on what that is uh, as far as focal length, but the main key pet factor on it is like you hit, it's, it's the focal length aspect. Now, do you know what this thing is kind of optimized for? Is it optimized for Newtonians, Dobbs, or refractors? Or? I bel don't quote me on this because I could be wrong. This is, this actual eyepiece is at Mount Wilson. Okay. So they use it on their big, I can't remember what it is, but on their big observatory telescope. This Pro big boy. <laughs> Probably not many of these made. There's a few. Okay. People have bought them before, but I know Scott went out to Mount Wilson a couple of years ago and, and physically hand delivered them. Well, those you are can sit here, 78. <laughs> a lot of zeros in front of that. A lot, a lot of zeros in that serial number. So this is number 78 um, that we have here. So now I wanted to ask Tyler about carbon fiber scopes, because these guys, you do more carbon fiber scopes, I think, than just about anybody out there? Just about anybody out there. I'm not going to say that we're the, one of the leading carbon fiber, but we have the main workhorses, the 102 and the 127. Now granted, the only carbon fiber that comes in are the FCD line. So these are both FCD 100s. Now, now this is a question you probably never had before. Oh boy. Do you think it's possible to get a carbon fiber that is white? Anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, I, has, I like white scopes, so like the scopes in the back here are kind of what I would prefer. But I realize that like if weight is an issue, you know, you kind of have to go with carbon fiber. I mean, you could... Well, also, I mean, it is a luxury. There are many other advantages, of course, the thermal. Yeah, the, the thermal stuff, you got the thermal dynamics. But again, all that is carbon fiber, you can paint, you can dip white to where you can get the same effect. And all you're doing is just adding a thin layer of paint yeah. with film. That's all you're really doing. I guess from a marketing standpoint, like people wouldn't know that it was carbon fiber, and that, that's kind of one of the reasons why you see them naked. Yeah, I mean, you, you know the difference between real carbon fiber and cheap carbon fiber, like a wrap? Yeah. You, you do know the difference real quick, and A, the weight, you know exactly the real difference. But the main key advantages of any carbon fiber in whatever color is the temperature flexure aspect of it. When you're doing any type of visual or astrophotography, you don't want to have to fluctuate with like with aluminum tube. You're going to have a lot of fluctuations because of either star blow, you're going to have to readjust your focus, and that's the added benefit of carbon fibers. You don't have to deal with that as much. And I would think too that like for some people that are in the desert, I think this would be almost an essential thing because out there they have such dramatic temperature swings. Yes. From uh, be 90 degrees in the daytime, then it'll sweep down to the 40s. Oh, yeah. 30s. Crazy, you know? Yeah, it gets crazy down there. You know, and I've never actually done a star party yet in Arizona. Never have. But I mean, I've been to Arizona, but I've never had the opportunity to just get out there in 90 degree heat, and all of a sudden it drops, you know, 30 to 40 degrees. They, they say it's so dry, you don't have to shave. You just kind of rub your hair and it falls apart on your face. <laughs> it saves money on racers. <laughs> <laughs> Man. We've got some in telescopes behind us. I know in telescopes are coming a really big thing. They are. And, uh, you guys like had a lot of success with them? 
So case in point, we have the Unistellers in the back behind us. We also have the Dwarfs as well. I mean, we are just distribution for Unistellar. You know, we got the Odyssey Pro and the Odyssey back here. Um, they're great for beginners on the aspect as it's your easy button. Yeah. You just press and go. Now the pros, you do have automatic focuser. So they did away with the actual focusing housing in the back end, like on the Equinox and the X2, the EV scope, where you had to manage the back, just focus back and forth. So now all you do is push a button and it focuses. So they're making it easier a little bit for everybody to get to use, you know, make that easy button a little easier. If do they do they have an alt as mount option yet? Mm, technically, it is an alt as. I'm sorry. I mean, I mean German <laughs> equatorial. Oh, long day. <laughs> it is a long day. You know, we're still uh, an hour and a half left to go. Um, you know, I don't see why you couldn't put some type of wedge on that, mm -hmm. or at least maybe 3D print one. I know with the ASI Air like like tricking it they would tell that it was at the north pole yeah and then they would point it you know kind of roughly north and so forth to kind of get rid of the star trails but now it's it's in their software now that you can do it yeah. and, and I'm, just, I'm just curious if they've done the same thing i i'm not sure if unistellar's done that yet i mean it's a great question um yeah that's all i'm going to say on that one <laughs> well, well hey thanks again for letting me talk course, to buddy. you buddy know, it's good seeing you again yeah. it's good seeing you you looking good looking good i'll look it up